Okay guys, today we're going to be looking at the best bushcrafting knife for Alaska. Now we've talked about survival knives and my preferences for survival knives in Alaska. But it would be fun to mix it up a little bit and talk about my preferences and what I look for in a really good bushcrafting knife. And unfortunately I only have one example out today. But this knife in particular, the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, I feel sums up just about everything you want to look for in a solid bushcrafting knife and then some so without any further ado let's jump into what i think it takes to have a really excellent bushcrafting wilderness living blade that is built for alaskan bushcrafting now i will say uh, i have to start this uh, video off with almost disclaimer like statement saying that in alaska alaska is kind of a different state because there are so many different environments and sub-environments that if you bushcraft in them this may not be the most applicable but today we're going to be talking specifically about Alaskan bushcrafting as it relates to the boreal forest or the taiga because that's where I spend the most of my time and that is where I spend and that is where I have learned the most about bushcrafting in Alaska. In addition to this, uh, when we talk about bushcrafting, bushcrafting is different from survival in the way that when you look for a survival knife, you're looking for a knife that can hold its own and not necessarily be a one tool option, but be a tool that can really hold its own and do tasks that other tools would do as well. Now granted that survival knife won't do them as well as say an ax or a saw, but it will do them. So with bushcrafting it's a little bit different. With bushcrafting it is assumed that you're going out with at least the minimum of a small saw or you know a folding saw and a hatchet if not an axe. So the tool set is a little bit different and a little bit more. So you're carrying more tools and that allows you to displace some of that work that would be you know put onto a knife onto a saw or onto an axe. So that is the primary difference between a bushcrafting and survival knife is what the tool is going to be doing and that largely impacts its size and its capabilities. So with all that out of the way let's jump into what I think what are features that I look for for bushcrafting knives in Alaska. The first and one that has always been and I've mentioned multiple times in other uh, survival and bushcrafting videos, is a homogenous design. And what do I mean by this? I mean a design that doesn't really have striking or defining characteristics. If you look at a lot of my bushcrafting knives, such as the uh, Bushcrafter here, or say the LT Wright Legome, or even the Battle Lore or the Aurora, they don't have really you know crazy finger choils or really crazy jimping. Um, really, they don't have, all four of the knives I just mentioned have no jimping, no finger choils, you know, they have nothing really crazy about them to make them a more tactical knife or to make them, like I said, uh, less homogenous. They all look reasonably the same and they all have a very bland design, which may be detractive to those people looking for something that looks cool because by and large, I mean, I've had many people call the Bark River Knives Aurora a glorified steak knife and you know those types of comments used to make me mad but honestly that's really what you're looking for you're looking for a knife that isn't you know fancy or cool or tactically or survival you know kind of looking you're looking for a knife that just looks like a knife and the reason why is when you hold something like the bushcrafter or the legome or the aurora you know they all have a very comfortable handle and their handle is well paired and matched to their blade so that you can hold this knife for hours or you know an hour and a half and just carve you can just cut you can make whatever you want and that's the biggest thing with bushcrafting is it has to be comfort oriented and i found that a lot of like i said a lot of these more homogenous designs that don't necessarily look special or look cool they really feel good in the hand and they are very useful. In addition, when you have a homogenous handle, it means that you can hold your blade in many different ways and you know get good cuts uh, using, say, chest lever or you know just a standard grip like this or this. 
And so in bushcrafting in general, but especially bushcrafting in Alaska, there's a high emphasis on creating things, making things. You know, obviously we walk out here, there isn't a pre-existing shelter or a pre-existing fire. And so having a good blade that can roll feathers on a feather stick or strike the back of a, or use the back of the knife to uh, strike the ferro rod in a comfortable way when you're holding it is really important. Okay, so the next part is going to be the blade and the steel. Now, once again, blade is one of those things that I have struggled with for a while because, honestly, I would love to sit here and say, you know, just go with this grind or go with that blade shape. But honestly, I have used many knives from the Puko-styled Legome to this more traditionally knife-styled you know, drop point of the bushcrafter. And honestly, they all have their pros and their cons. What I would say is I look for something that is reasonably thin, and this uh, bushcrafter is on the thicker side, but no thicker than 0.18, with a preference around 1 8th of an inch uh, or 5 30 seconds of an inch thick. Those are my preferences in blade steel thickness for a bushcrafting knife because you don't want something very thick uh, for the primary reason that if you are using a very thick knife for a prolonged period of time for carving, crafting, and making things, it takes more energy and more effort to drive that thicker piece of steel through a piece of wood or you know whatever you're carving on, and that adds an extra level of exhaustion or really fatigue over the course of time. And so I like thinner blades where they are stout enough that if you need to baton them, you can certainly do that without question or without fear, just like this uh, bushcrafter. But at the same time, they're also reasonably thin where they're not going to be just a hunk of thick steel. In addition to this, uh, so there's really no blade style preference. There's also no blade grind preference for a certain, you know, like, I'm not saying for sure, for certain, that I like a particular style. However, out of my top bushcrafting knives, um, they, three out of the four are Scandi grinds. However, I do prefer uh, Scandi Vex grinds, like on this bushcrafter. I think the Scandi Vex is a really good compromise between a good convex grind and a Scandinavian grind. It offers a lot of the pros of both and not a lot of the cons that come with either grind. So I like the Scandivex. I find it doesn't bite as hard or as deep as the Scandinavian, but just a traditional Scandi. But at the same time, it's not as awkward to use as a convex because sometimes convexes can be, at least in my opinion, a little bit weird and they don't want to dig as deep as I would like them to. So the Scandivax is a really good, like I said, compromise between the two uh, grinds. And once again, another reason why I'm showing the Bushcrafter. Aside from that, blade length is something that is not critical for me, but for, in my opinion, a solid Bushcrafting knife, the blade length needs to be under five, preferably under four and a half inches. This kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier when we were talking about you know, using multiple blades, or sorry, multiple tools. And so if you're already using a hatchet or an ax plus a saw, you know, you don't really need a large knife because the large knife is there to fill the role of potentially not having a saw or potentially not having your hatchet or ax. So when you have a, when you have those other tools, you just don't need a lar large blade. And uh, most of the blades I have and most of the blades I have for bushcrafting are honestly under 4 inches. This bushcrafter included is 3.75, and the Legome, which is a, another one of my very much loved bushcrafting knives, is 3.8. So they're both under 4 inches in blade length. And once again, I definitely prefer that because you just don't need a larger knife. Uh, these are really just fine. And honestly, when you go to a knife that's too large, you lose a lot of ability to do your fine-tuned, very fine uh, motor skills when it comes to crafting. So that is what I have to say about blade length. Definitely you want it under 5 inches, but preferably under 4.5 to 4 inches. Lastly, and this is going to be one of those points where you either disagree with me or you disagree... You either agree with me or you disagree with me, and that is on blade steel. Now, I've tested a lot of steels through my channel, and I'm very 
particular about my steel preferences and for bushcrafting knives I like specifically super steels whenever I can get them in fairness I like super steels in general but whenever I can get a super steel on a knife that will really be my favorite particular uh, steel for a knife and that's no exception here the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter is CPM 3V but I do also really like CPM S35 VN um, other super steels are just fine but those two have my overall preference because of their corrosion resistance, their durability, their edge retention, and so on and so forth. They really do a great job. And, and some people like, you know, the homage to older times and more traditional steels. So, you know, just tool steels such as D2 or O1 or even more traditional steels like 1095 or 1084. Uh, people might go with and there's nothing wrong with those steels I, they're just quite frankly uh, harder to maintain and they will rust up on you easier so while you do get pretty good edge retention out of the aforementioned steels they also do not have great corrosion resistance like your super steels and so I like super steels because they are low maintenance and high performance so that's why I choose them over just about anything and honestly, when you see me running a lot of bushcrafting or survival knives, you will commonly see super steels in the mix because I really do have a strong preference for super steels. However, I will say at the same time, not a lot of survival knife companies or companies pumping out survival knives or bushcrafting knives make them in super steels. So there is that. But I do definitely prefer them whenever you can get them. Like I said, CPM 3V, S35 VN and even potentially that new S45 VN are definite solid choices. Okay guys, so the last part to what makes a good survival, or sorry, what makes a good bushcrafting knife has to be the ability to strike a ferro rod. You'll notice that all of my bushcrafting knives, regardless to their steel selection, their blade length, their handle length, handle shape, whatever, every single one of my bushcrafting knives can not only strike a ferro rod, but strike it well. And I mean, these are purposely designed spines of the knife that, like I said, are specifically designed to strike ferro rods and strike them well. They are sharpened and, like I said, they're striking, they're sharpened to throw sparks very well from ferro rods. And that is important because in bushcrafting, I run a lot of ferro rods. I never, I never go a day without having a ferro rod when I'm bushcrafting. So I don't always use ferro rods, but I do always have a ferro rod on me for bushcrafting specifically. So that is the single probably, so that is an extremely important part of the ability for the knife in my opinion is to be able to strike a ferro rod and like I said to strike one very well. So those are basically the most important features for me when I look for a bushcrafting knife in Alaska to use here in the boreal forest or taiga. Those are the things I'm looking for and that is what I want to see. Hopefully this has been informative for you guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and as always, God bless and I'm out.